Welcome everyone. This episode covers a lot of different things. We're going to be talking about taking database tables and generating a web application from that. I'll show you how to add pages to your site. We'll get into authentication and logging into your site as well as sharing your site with others. And lastly, we'll get into how to modify the look and feel of your website. So lots of stuff, let's get started and hope you enjoy. This video, we're gonna be talking about how to create an app from these tables that we've been creating in the previous couple videos. Now, before we get started, I did wanna show you guys one thing. In the last video, we had the issue because books, I set the ISBN to the wrong data type. So this was originally like varchar 255 or like 4,000 or something ridiculous. And the problem was that the automatic generated data was way too large. But you can see I actually cropped it down to five characters. You could have done 13 or whatever. And I just wanted to show you guys how to do that real quick so you guys could be on the same page. I did this with custom SQL. So going back to the main page and then inside of SQL commands, I executed this query here. Now, I actually did it with the length five, but you could do 13 because I think ISBNs go up to length 13. So this shows that anything is possible, but obviously you wouldn't want to do this in production data because you're at serious risk of deleting something important. So because we're working with generated data, I'm fine with this, but you always want to try to get your data structure right before you start putting important data in it. So basically this query just took the first 13 characters and set that to the ISBN and it did this for everyone that uh, ISBN was greater than 13, which would be everyone. So I'm not even sure that's necessary. <laughs> then what I did is I altered the table and modified the ISBN by setting it to varchar2 of size 13. All right, so that is how you get up to speed with where I am. That's how you change the data type. And now we're good to go. We should be able to, to deal with the data we have and start creating an application. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this books table that we created, and I wanna take this data and I wanna put that on a pretty web page. See, I can access the data from here, but I have to sign into Apex and I gotta to go to the SQL workshop and that's not cool. I wanna put it on a pretty web page that I can show off to my friends, impress some ladies and so forth. Because obviously that's why people go into technology, it's to get the ladies. So what we're going to do is we're going to build an interactive report that you can go in and work with this data. So let's go to the app builder. We're going to create a new application from scratch. New application. Give it some really cool name. We'll call it my library. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some pages. Now here are a lot of different options for pages that we can start with. We can modify each and every one, but this is basically the starting point. So if you want a particular thing, you might want to select it from this list. So let's go with a report, and this is going to be for books. Now we can select a table. What, what table are we going to select from? That's right, we're going to do books. Now if you want to keep it real simple and just put everything together, you could actually use the books view, which will be nice and clean because that's going to have the authors already in there. Then we can add the page, and then we can choose an appearance. The one we've been using is this Vita, but there's all kinds of different options. I will go with this one. You could also use a custom theme if that's something you're into. And we'll save changes. Now I'm gonna enable all features. Two things of interest I want to call out is the access control. So this allows people to log in and we can give people different capabilities. And the other thing was that there's this theme style selection. So this allows you to easily change the, the look and feel of your website. With access control by default, it's just going to be Apex accounts. So anyone who has an account under your workspace, which we might get into that soon, basically you can create accounts that people can log into your web application and start working with it. Scrolling down, we can click create application and give it a couple seconds and we'll be good to go. Now, before we hit run application, I want to show you guys something just real quick under shared components. Here's where you can get extra information about some of those things we enabled. So for example, under security, this is where we can find the authentication. So you can go under authentication schemes and you can change it up. So rather than using Apex accounts, you could do social sign-on or you can do single sign-on or some various other ways of signing into your web application. We're gonna leave it at the default for right now. So what we're gonna do is go back to the application right here and run the application. Log in. And here's a simple application that we can go view our books and do some basic analytics on them. All right, so this is our table. What we can do now is we can explore some other options. For example, we have this theme roller capability down at the bottom. And what this does is it allows you to change the way your page looks. So you can change the global colors, which will kind of just change the entire website, or you can change any specific thing. 
So just to see this out, let's go make this a uh, bright pink. Uh, yeah, bright red. <laughs> and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the the background bright purple. Right. This is this is modern web development. This is what it looks like. Oh boy. So this obviously looks terrible. So I'm not gonna keep that. But what you can do is you can easily adapt a web page to a particular theme. So if you're developing an application for a company or for a school or nonprofit. You can basically put their colors in here and boom, your website pretty much looks like their website. And of course, I'm going to reset. We can open interactive reports and we can change the background. So if you want like a gray background, for example, you can do that. There you go. This is a draggable window, by the way. And then all you gotta do is save as. And what you can do is you can create a new style because we have a, a list of styles we can choose from and we can basically add to this list. So let's save this as slate gray background and save. Now when you're choosing your style, that's gonna be an option that you can use to easily change the theme for a website. Now the other thing I wanted to share with you is how to share this web page with someone. So when you look up at the URL, there's gonna be a lot of this junk at the end, but the real thing that defines your application is everything before this first colon. So this number here is your application ID and that's all that's important. So we can just go from the beginning, copy that, and you can share that with someone. And what they can do is go to this application and log in. What do they use to log in, you might ask? Well, the username and passwords for your applications are tied to your workspace. So if you create a workspace on your own and you create user accounts, those are different than the user accounts for my workspace. So we need to do a little bit of work on the back end. So inside of the app builder, we're going to select my library and click edit, then go into shared components. All of the user information junk is found in the security panel. So what we're gonna do is we're going to look first at the authentication schemes. And you can see that we're using application express authentication. So people need an Apex account under this workspace. So you can change that if you want to try some different ways of verifying people. Um, but we're just going to create an Apex account under our uh, workspace. So first we need to define who's allowed to access the application. So we'll go to application access control and we're going to add user role assignment. Um, and then we'll just go with test at test.com <laughs> and this is a reader and then we'll create that assignment. All right. So this person's allowed to access this application. Now what we need to do is we need to actually create that account because this is basically just saying this person's allowed, but you could put anything there. It doesn't necessarily mean they exist. So under this tab at the top right, the, the third one from the right here, you're gonna go to manage users and groups. And here we're going to create a user. So we're gonna make test at test.com, put that for the email address, and we're just gonna put no for all this stuff so this person doesn't have any special privileges for the, the back end of Apex. Then we're going to give it a password and then we're going to create the user. Cool, so that's where that shows up and you can create another if you would like just to, to practice. Um, so this time we'll do test2 at test.com. No, all right, we'll create that user as well. All right, now let's try logging into our application. First one we're going to try is test. Test at test.com, sign in. And look at that, we access the library, whoop, whoop. Cool, so all that stuff's available to us. Now what I wanna do is I wanna sign out and I wanna try test two. So in this situation, when we sign in, it says we're not authorized to view this application. What the heck? Going back to the back end, you can see that this user account exists, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has permission to access that application. That is why inside of the app builder, we had to configure those settings. So that was available under shared components and then application access control. So we put test in here, but we didn't put test two. So that's just a little bit on, you know, the authentication. Obviously this is a big subject, especially with the fact that you can do social media accounts and other stuff like that. We're just using the basic Apex accounts, which isn't necessarily recommended for large scale applications, but if you're just dorking around making some simple stuff, they seem to do just fine. So the next obvious step is to take your application to the next level, because right now it's really weak, but I think that's all I have time for in this video. In fact, I went through an awful lot of material, so I'll let that 